will do verse 1 to uh, verse 10, or thereabout here. John chapter three, uh, 13, from 1 to, let's do up, and t up to 17. John 13, 1 to 17. It says, It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. Verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. That is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Verse 17, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. That's the word of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was introduced, I am married to Julie, and together we have two boys. We serve with the Africa Inland Church in Ongatarongai, DCC. Uh, the church is a few kilometers to Kiserian town, so we are not in the city, to the county of Kajiado. So, but we, we also neighbor uh, Nairobi. And uh, I have uh, greetings from the sister to cheerleading. I Kasisi insist, insisted that I come along with her. She's a little bit elusive, so uh, to get hold of her is not very easy, but of course she has explained that uh, she was sent to go and visit the mother, and so she sent greetings. Uh, uh, pastor Odu is a good friend of one of our pastors, Pastor Ocheng. And he also sent greetings. He, since, uh, Pastor Odui ins, uh, incited him that he should come. So he had caused me a lot of problem. Fortunately, all the cars were full, so <laughs> we couldn't get him a space. But he also sent his greetings. We are blessed with two boys, Zenas and the Pudens. Again, we had to uh, sneak out so that they also don't <laughs> get to come along with us. And uh, we are blessed. We are happy and honored to fellowship with you. Uh, the reason why I came with a group of uh, leaders is because we wanted to just learn one or two things about this church. Uh, there is a lot to learn. I wish it coincided with the opening, the grand opening, 
because Tungona Bila Pia Munafungua Kanisa, because we're in the process of building a church. And so kindly, Mchungaji, you can send us some clip on how you do it, so that we can also benchmark on that. Thank you for the good work you are doing. May the Lord continue to bless you, Yawaze, and the team, and the entire church. Uh, you are among the churches that we really envy, and we pray that the Lord will continue to grow you and to continue to love the Lord. Buana Sifiwe. Yeah, we are inspired. And uh, fortunately, we are very far from you because I am concerned about our Lona. Lona, we also do a lot of good singing. It's only that. Uh, but we do a lot of good singing. We thank God. The team is also outside there. So I'll request Joel to just guide the elders who are coming. Uh, upper room discourse. Tungaji has mentioned that throughout the week he will be posting and uh, reminding us of what happened from Monday through Friday, when our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. Allow me to take you to Thursday. Night, just hours before Jesus Christ was crucified. Our theme for the year, as I is Singoro, is wrapping a towel. And so I thought that I can probably if allow share some bit of what we are learning this year. We learn that Apostle John devoted one third of his book to the last 24 hours period Jesus spent on earth. Chapter 13, where we just read, to chapter 17, describe one of the scenes from that period. And nothing like this chapter exists in the whole Bible. The upper room discourse is crucial, and I wish we can also be part of this dialogue between Jesus Christ and his disciples in the upper room so that we learn and get to know what Jesus was teaching his disciples for the last three years and that now he's bringing home everything that he had taught. This moment where Jesus is sitting and conversing and having a dialogue with his disciple is actually helping the disciples to settle slowly on what they had learned and experience all through the time that they had shared with Jesus. This is arguably the longest and the most emotional night of Jesus Christ. These lines provide an intimate memoir of Jesus' most anguished evening. He's sitting there discussing, answering questions of who he is, why he had come, how can someone be right with God, what is it that Jesus expects his people, disciples and all of us do even as we continue to wait for that moment when he will be coming to take us home. I want us to, do, uh, to learn or to draw three lessons from this passage. I've realized that you keep time. Huko kwetu tunakuwaga na masamengi, tunangalia jua, hapa naona tunangalia saa. And so you allow me to rush through the three points that we learn from this very discourse. One of the things we learn from this time of Jesus together with his disciples is the love of Christ. Ambia yule yako karibu nawe, the love of Christ. I'm saying the love of Christ because the love of Christ is different from other kind of love. The term, or this kind of love, John has used it eight times from chapter 1 to chapter 12. From chapter 13 to 17, he has used it 13 times. And this is telling because we realize that John is also an apostle of love and he wants to remind us of how Jesus loved and that is what, how we should also love. Listen to how John starts verse th chapter 13. It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who are in the world, he now shows them the full extent of his love. Two things. Jesus 
loved them to his last breath, Jesus showed his complete love. Let me tell you something. One of the things that is in short supply nowadays is love. Upendo within families, even within churches, in the neighborhood, we are having short of love. I'm reminded of a story of these two brothers. Was there? They had just retired, and they decided to begin or to start a small, uh, some shop, uh, small shops. And they got uh, in a place like what you have outside there, and they got some houses, and they put shops. But one of them there was very jealous. He couldn't stand to see a customer pass his uh, shop and enter in the friend's shop. And of course, they thought they were friends. And every time someone got into that shop, and every time he was really uh, cursing, every time he saw someone stop and uh, get into the uh, colleague's shop, he was full of jealous. Fortunately or unfortunately, the Lord our God sent an angel to this Muse one night. And this is what he told him. I want to bless you with whatever blessing you request. Kama ni pesa, kama ni dukalako, alikuwe kubwa, kama ni meka mingi, I'm going to bless you. But on this condition, that the blessings I give you, I'll double the blessing to the person who has a shop next to you. You know that's tricky. Kwa sababu huu mzee apendi huyu mzee mwingine, lakini anajifanyaga na mzua. Karibuni, wazee. And so, he thought and told the, the angel to come the following day. Of course, he needed to reflect and think seriously because it's a very tricky offer. And he knocked on a solution. Now, can be angel, do this. I have a request. And the blessing that I want you to give to me is to pluck one of my eye. And you know what will happen? He'll go to the neighbor that's exactly what happened. So he was remained with one eye, and the friend closed the shop, and so he could have all the customers, but he struggled, of course, to sell, because now he was using one eye. Love! The love of Christ. We are told that Jesus Christ loved his disciples to the end, realizing that the time was coming for him to be crucified. He had all to lose. He decided that he will continue loving his disciples. He will love Judas, he will love Peter, and all this bunch of disciples who will run away from him and desert him during the hour that he needed the most. His love was unconditional. His love was immeasurable. He wanted to love them to the very end. The Greek word used there is telos, which means an accomplished purpose. This refers to Jesus' work of redemption for humanity on the cross. A form of this same word was Jesus' last word on the cross. We remember the three immortal words, it is finished, which we learn had a connotation of paid in full. John confirms that Jesus indeed loves his disciples and he loved them to his last breath. It was paid in full when Jesus died on the cross and he demonstrated the full extent of his love. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 tells us, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all lost holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how deep is the love of Christ. Jesus later 
In chapter, the same chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, that's John 13, 34 to 35. A new command I give you, love one another. I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus tells them it's a new command. Of course, it's not very new. But the kind of love that he wants them to love each other with is that love that was demonstrated by Jesus Christ on the love. That agape love, that sacrificial love, that love which is guided by self-denial. It to close that point by reminding you of a story. Of the early period of the church, that's when the church was just beginning or starting. And one of the emperor was really concerned about the growth of this sect. And he was very concerned because it was growing like a bushfire. And he called one of his aides and told him, please, can you go and interact with these people who calling themselves Christians? Eat with them, interact, join in the ranks and get to know why are they growing this fast? I've never seen something like this. And so this guy called Aristides went there, interacted with them, eat with them, and purported to be one of them. And he came back with these immortal words. And he was asked, what have you learned about this? Very sect, and he said this was that will never be forget, forgotten. Behold how they love one another. That's the basis of church. Bwana asifiwe. Toa upendo katika kanisa, kanisa ni nabomoka. Bwana asifiwe. And that's the struggle that most churches are struggling with. That we can have a loveless church. We even read about it in the book of Revelation. How we wish that AIC in Joro will continue to be a church full of love. The second point from that is that the, we also learn the humility of Christ. The humility of Christ. Kiburi. Ni tofauti ama ni kinyume cha unyenyekevu. Mzee mmoja wa kanisa mahali, si hao wazee wa Njoro, hao wazee wa Njoro, na ni na shukuru wazee wangu mtaingia kwa second service muone vile wazee wa Njoro wanaruka. Hao wazee wangu ni wale wa yeye si wanasimamaga hivi mimi naruka naona kama nafanya dhambi. Wazee wa Njoro wako na roho kabisa. I could see them jumping and I was very embarrassed. Next time I would want to see them, to see them. Na kwa hivyo mzee, he was one of the Elders, you know, long before, elders were fireworks. You couldn't, every time you are called into vestry, you are very careful. You'd rather even run away because you didn't know why these wazes are calling you. And so there was this very popular mze who was really a consuming fire. He met you and he could read all your sins. And everyone feared him. Unfortunately, or fortunately, let me say it is, it was a fortunate thing that he struggled with a sin. Yakuvuta cigara. And he struggled for many years. It's only the wife who knew. And because he was also fire at home, so the wife knew very well that <laughs> was not supposed to expose this muse. And Muse was feared and full of himself and he was very proud and everybody knew that for you to access God, you didn't even need to go through Jesus Christ. This Muse was his way to God. And so he was always there commanding everyone purporting to be the only big man in the house. And so one day he was just about to preach and they realized what was going to sit there and sweat and so he decided to dash to the toilet and just two, two paths. Nakokaida here is do you up and you see na kokaida mchungaji akiamka si anaimbiwa kwanza wimbo ya tenzi. And so they were singing this tenzi and the 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 tenzi was almost and the mother realized that it, time was catching up with him. Sida huyu mzee alikuwa carpenter. Na unajua carpenter ki kalamu anaikaa wapi? So mzee forgot that this cigar was not a pen. And uh, kaweka hapa na akakimbia. And you can imagine wakati ya lifika kwa kanisa na... But of course people thought that he brought it as an illustration. Na kwa hivu wakasema kuna watu hapa wanabuta sigara leo wataonana na umze. Na kwa hivu as he was hammering the gospel, the cigar fell and he was really humbled and he requested was there to pray for him. And that particularly he became, or he turned his life to Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ wrapped a towel and did that service that was only meant for slaves. Not even a disciple could wash his master's feet, but Jesus allowed himself to go that level and wash his disciples' feet, reminding all of us that every single one of us can toop and low for Christ. That we can all wake up and serve. We are reminded that the food is still being served. Listen, the evening meal was being served. Jesus Christ decided to, and he already knew that the devil had prompted Judas Iscariot. And Jesus decided to perform an act of humility and remind others that we have been invited for service or to serve and not to be served. Paul says that we should be imitators of Christ. He reminds us of how Jesus Christ humbled, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something uh, to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being in, made in human likeness and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself eh, by becoming obedient to death. Even death on the cross. Jesus did not go for a title. He went for a towel. How, what a lesson to this bunch of arrogant. You remember these disciples had even begun a debate of who will succeed Jesus. Succession Battle had already started, and they were asking how one our thunder, when John, Nanduguyake, James, when I say, Mama Mayetu, I met one be a me to Liza, to Kuliza Nana Takam Kono, who am a whom in Guinea Katika of Alma Wako. Jesus did not answer all those questions, but he demonstrated what humility and service was all about. The last point the service of Christ. Jesus reminds us that now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. That we need to ask ourselves how or how I we've been called to be Christians. Last year we were learning that we are saved for service. That we are all invited by Jesus Christ to participate in service. Jesus said the leader is the one who serves. In all of this, Jesus acted out a parable for the disciples. Jesus rose from a place of comfort when the evening meal was being served. He was, in conven he was inconvenienced. He decided to wash them even though he needed to be eating because he needed energy. He decided to take a break and wash his disciples' feet. I was reminding members the other day that we need also to really be very careful. We do a lot of visitations as pastors. And at times we come with the tunakujaga maushirika kwa nyumba zenu na shida ya squeeze and like zamani mnatuwekea carpet. And so we have all to leave our shoes hapo kwa mlango. Na unajua washiriki wetu pia wanatembea wengine wanatembea muda mrefu wakitafuta kibarua, si ndio? And every time you go to a house Unasikia kama kuna mshiriki mmoja na wakwaza but you don't know which which one is it. And so at times pastor has to take all this. At times pastors do not kuwa mziko wote. Unajaribu kuangalia kama ni mguu yako ambayo inatoa hiyo harufu. Na uweze jua ni ya nani. But in all that, Jesus took all those feet. They were very dirty and he decided during meal time ni kama vile hao watu wa Hapix sijui kama ni kwa TV yangu tu wanakujaza zile watu wanakula Sasa zile tu umekula vizuri umetayarishiwa za watu mtu wa Hapix anakuja kuonyesha vile utaosha mahali ambapo utakiwa kufikiria wakati unakula That's exactly how Jesus was in convenience He decided to do the worst kind of ministry during the wrong time He was in convenience Do you know what we are learning from that that every single service 
can we can be inconvenienced in any way when we are called to serve. Bwana asifiwe. We Christians are not supposed to just sit every one of us to take a towel, wrap it around her, him, herself or himself and walk and take up that task and serve. Ni mwaka ni ya uchaguzi. Juu kama upande watu wa kijabe mnachaguana, kwetu tunachaguana. Now this is the worst time for most pastors. Because a lot of people want to come and present themselves for those selective posts. But very few realize the task of this very service. Bwana asifiwe. And you will be surprised that there are people behind there who are doing probably more than myself as a pastor because they have realized that service is not, in, not only standing here and preaching, but there is a lot that can be done in the house of God. Bwana asifiwe. Jesus was inconvenienced. He had to really humble. In fact, when Paul, Peter is challenging him from washing his feet, he is actually doing the right thing because Jesus was not allowed by, because of his status to, be, to come that low. Jesus had to take that very task to remind all of us that we've been called and saved for service. How I pray that this year, as we continue with the year, as we look forward to celebrate Easter, that we are going to demonstrate love. We are talking of a holy week. This holy week should be preceded by us loving one another just as Jesus loved. We should commit ourselves to humble that our people outside there will see the humility of Christ Jesus in our lives. And we will also commit ourselves for service, because that is how we'll be able to honor and bring glory. The second person of God's head, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May the Lord bless you, even as we continue to await his coming. Lord, we thank you that you've reminded us to love as you loved. To humble as you remained humbled all through the ministry that you did here on earth. Thank you for the service. You saved us not by works but through your grace. And now you are inviting us to commit in the work of service and that we should love and serve and humble as you did. That you are not calling us into titles but into picking a towel and wrapping it around our waist and dirtying our hands in the service of the Lord. And this way God will continue to disseminate your blessings upon us and will continue to bless us because you are God who keeps your promise. Thank you for the time that you've given us together and your word which will continue to convict us and humble us Then as we continue to celebrate the message of the cross and the hope that we have through your death and through resurrection. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I see